start. Oh. Coming in. There he is. Right uppercut. Adrian Broner had all the potential in the world. He started boxing at six. By the time he goes pro, he's racked up 300 wins. He becomes a fixture of one of the most famous gyms in the modern era. He became the protege of Floyd Mayweather, who taught Broner to be boxing's next billion dollar heel. He was sold as the next big thing out of the money team. Listen, man, they call me the problem, but you could call me the can man, because anybody can get it. Africans, Americans, Dominicans, Mexicans, anybody can get it. He was also one of the most wildly irresponsible human beings to ever take up boxing. AP, you know, always in big shit. His nickname, The Problem, was an accurate assessment. While it's hard to begrudge a kid from poverty the urge to show off his hard-earned wealth, Broner's arrogance went far deeper than gaudy materialism. His life outside the ring had the chaotic energy of a bag full of money at the strip club. The bad shit this looks like tomorrow and I'm gonna go ham and cheese. And I ain't talking about a breakfast sandwich, but uh, we, we eating those push up. But between the ropes, he was one of boxing's most put together counter punchers. No, I, it's different levels, man. You know, if they go up to one level, I go to the next level. Broner was the top ranked contender at 135 and went up two weight classes for a crack at welterweight titleist Holly Malinaji. I'll bring a, a guest who's really one of my closest, closest friends now, Jessica. Well, Jess, as he used to call her, his ex. Make a long story short, you know, um, they broke up. Probably wasn't hitting it off hard enough. <laughs> and now she's with a heavy hitter. <laughs> Malinaji was known for his quick hands and consistent jab, but he was also a notorious feather fist. I was trying to see what Malinaji had. Probably gave the first round. Broner was walking Pauly down behind the Philly Shell defense. And then turned it into a different kind of a fight. In the second, he nails Pauly with the classical boxing combination of a kick to the groin to set up an uppercut. When Broner did decide to fight, he had the economic accuracy of his mentor. He rarely threw more than three in combination, but those landed clean and hard enough to earn respect. Oh, big right hand by leaping. While Pauly had moved and peppered, Broner threw almost exclusively power. Broner came out on top of an entertaining technical fight and in the post-fight interview just had to remind the world just how insufferable a good fighter can afford to be. Hey Pops, brush my hair. He couldn't hit me. He couldn't hit me. He was shadow boxing. I beat Polly. I left with his belt and his girl. I'm gonna be honest, since everybody think I'm picking my opponents, my next opponent, I'm gonna let y'all pick. And whoever whoever got the highest percentage, I'm fighting. Us. I know, I know, though. Fair, fair. But don't, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't, hold on, wait, wait, don't break about taking my side piece. Don't break about taking my side piece, though. That's my side piece. You don't get laid. 
With a win over Polly, Adrian was approaching the top half of the pound-for-pound -pound list. He was sitting on the precipice of superstardom as a natural heel. It was going to make him rich, same way it made Floyd rich. All he had to do was keep talking and keep winning. A lot of people were willing to pay to watch him take a beating. Broner's chosen opponent was a man whose name has become a modern byword for heavy-handed. Marcos Maidana was in no uncertain terms a slugger. A solid overall fighter capable of defense and technical trickery. But his offense was ugly, effective, violent power punching, part stylistic and part God given. He threw his right hand like a pitcher out of the stretch. There was a windup and a telegraph, but his shots land like an axe in a tree trunk. Marcos could get in a slugfest with anything with a pulse. Eric Morales made a fine example. Morales was a legend deep into his 30s, returned from retirement for one last run. Maidana was a massive favorite by virtue of the calendar. Listos, vámonos. Eric Morales is from arguably some of the toughest streets in the civilized Western world in El Norte and Tijuana, but it is Maidana who expects to take Morales into the jungle tonight. And it starts with an uppercut that doesn't land. He came out in the first round, landed a hook that almost instantly broke Eric's eye. That right eye looks very bad. Looks almost as though he got bumped. Round one not over with yet. Already Eric Morales may be a one-eyed fighter. But, and the way Morales' eyes swelled up was striking. Yup, the tissues does not react the same way to getting hit as you age. He's just keeping the momentum. How long can Morales stand up against this pace? It took about five minutes before the swelling closed his eye completely. No way Morales survives against a young puncher like Maidana, half blind for nine rounds. With the way he can punch, it only takes one or two from Maidana. Walked through it and came back. Now he has to walk through another one as Morales lands a good right. This is not just today, tonight with Maidana, this is throughout Morales' comeback. Maidana bombs away at Eric who wasn't going quietly into that good night. Hard right hand over the top by Morales. Maybe it's best a pleasure to watch an old great champion like this put up this kind of fight. But, and the old warrior fights back again. He's never known any other way. He's never held for a moment. Morales threw back short and straight, beating Marcos's wide arcing hooks and overhands to the target. But it hasn't happened. Oh! Huge left hook! Maidana's holding on! the moment with the upper hand in a fight of the year candidate against Marcos Maidana. An amazing show. Eric's experience saw him through when his eye couldn't. And right now, Maidana believes that he's trying to finish the fight. Stop, stop. All of a sudden, Maidana has found the oh, second win. Oh. Look at him take Morales' hard shot. Eric Morales stand as he comes to the 12th round. Look at you. 106. Morales has proven everyone wrong who criticized the matchup. A giant sack by Madonna. And the right hand. And another right hand. Last ditch effort to knock Morales out. And the old warrior stands up. Marcos won the fight, but Eric proved he always had one more good one left in him. With Adrian on the cusp of superstardom, and Marcos always involved in the most entertaining war on any given card. Fans look forward to the scrap. The bell and round one. Adrian Broner sporting the red with gold. Marcos held no fear or respect for the man thought to be Floyd's counterpunching heir apparent. Marcos quickly built off the body jab to hurt him, then chased him around like a bull after a matador with intent to gore. Along the ropes. Gavin Reese bumps 
Just enough to set a lot. McDonald's doing the same. We're talking, we're talking. By Broner. To win this fight, Adrian Broner's going to have to hurt Marcos Maidana. I felt cuts the last one just grazing the chin. And it's all Marcos Maidana here in round number one. In a round where Broner barely landed a punch, he ends up behind Maidana after waltzing his way off the ropes. For some reason, Adrian decides to hump him. No need for that kind of stuff in the sweet sides as we go rounds, while Broner has recorded 11 of his 22 kills in the first of two. Marcos made him pay. He ducks down with a left hook, initially disguising its intended target by making it look like it's going to be to the body. Broner instinctively drops his hands and tries to fade away but actually puts himself directly in its path when it comes at his neck. Marcos spent the rest of the round bombing on Broner who held himself together to survive. Broner came out in the third and did his best to tame down the charging bull. His counters were quick and crisp, but not nearly frequent enough to discourage. Marcos made Broner's body the focus of his attack. Just when Adrian's hands dropped, Marcos would try to check his chin, usually by doubling up with the same hand first to the body, then upstairs. Broner might have been an insufferable heel, but he was still among the best in boxing. He was versatile enough to try and force Maidana onto the back foot. Part of it was raw physicality of using the cross face and the clinches or the body jab at long range. Right uppercut lands by Broner. Broner could only olay his way around the bull so many times before he found himself stuck between the horns again. Maidana's wide, wild style of punching presented a problem. The shoulder roll counter is the bread and butter of the Philly shell. It also allows users to deflect incoming right hands with the lead shoulder, ideally timing it so the twist of the torso does two things at the same time. It knocks the right hand off its flight path, deflecting the punch past its intended target. It also loads all a fighter's weight into his right, which easily explodes back into a counter. This works as intended if your opponent is throwing the right reasonably straight. Because Marcos intentionally wings his overhands from such drastic angles, he's getting over the top of the shoulder. The attack with his left was built off the body jab and hook. Marcos usually came low. Once Adrian began to reach for his body punches, Marcos goes upstairs with looping power. Five years old, a stellar amateur career with over 300 fights, and there he eats a right cross from Maidana. Coming forward this round. Because he's throwing his punches wide, it limits Broner's options for escape. Steve, you and I both have it for Maidana. And Steve, what do you think? Stepping out to either direction, leads to getting crushed by a biological wrecking ball. Broner already got dropped trying to pull away. One real option remains. Hold his ground or get beat trying. Comparisons with Broner with, uh, with Floyd Mayweather here is, uh, Broner, some flashy combinations. Broner made a stand to start the eighth. 
He came out throwing heat to counter every jab. Maidana quickly caught on and started nibbling with feints to get Broner to throw his hardest punches at thin air. Broner keeps the pressure up, which makes him a target Marcos doesn't have to chase. Maidana times a step in to meet Broner with a brutal lead left hook. Marcos commits to a right to the body so thoroughly it shifts him into the southpaw stance. A sweeping overhand left drives Broner down. Adrian makes the count, and Marcos swarms to get the finish. Broner gains control of Marcos with double overhooks. Marcos tries to yank his hands free, pulling Broner into a meeting of the minds. It was more of a slip-up than a headbutt, but Adrian sells it like he wants an Oscar. He needed time and he got it. He also got a point taken from Marcos. As much as it's tradition to hate the game more than the player, Adrian's undignified display was especially cringeworthy. The world learned just how good a punch Broner could take, and how many. In the 11th, Marcos found himself behind Broner and just couldn't resist. Two wrongs may not make a right, but it makes it even, though. In one night, Broner went from the next big thing to a public laughing stock. With a final bell, Marcos had officially pulled off the upset. earning himself a crack at the most elusive and profitable man in boxing.